So, g'day. Welcome back to Guru Mate Coins and Banknotes. I'm Glenn, and I'm the homeless person hosting this channel. So, you like my background? Yes, it looks pretty uh, messy. So, anyway, lately I've been buying quite a few books. So, this is the actual bookshelf. has a lot of coin books on it. Most of them I haven't read. Uh, quite a few of them are in Chinese. Simplified as well. And Simplified is not as good as traditional. So, anyway, this is an old coin catalogue. So, I really like this. Get it. Rip it open. So, it's a book. It's not coins. But, it's probably a catalogue that most people who currently collect don't don't know. I didn't know. Uh, because the current catalogues are pretty sparse on information. They have, you know, just the basics. But, ooh, here we have collection of Australian stamps. Obviously, that's not it. I do have a stamp channel, but I just don't have time to actually post on it. Okay, so... What I actually have is the Australian banknotes. So this is Michael P. Watt Reynolds. And on it, it has the actual three decimal banknotes. I'd actually like to know what the hell that was. Probably just a stamp album. Okay, so. Okay. It says the first edition, blah, 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 blah. So you can read that. But I'm not really going to go through... Oh, sorry. Let's turn over. I'm not going to go through all of it. But I'll just show you the information that this contains. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so I haven't actually... I just quickly ripped through this book. And this one is... Yeah, it's quietly damaged. Uh, when was it printed? I don't even know. Uh, second edition. And that's who it's to. And... Okay, self in the self Australian magazine with a selection of early and high denominations were forty thousand dollars at the time. Obviously, this hundred dollar no, a hundred pound note you'll probably be paying forty thousand now. So, uh, inflation does increase, you know, the value of our currency. So this is a damn got it. Okay, so you can read this. This is a forward. You know, a lot of books have forwards. Have an address. And this is a 1st edition, 79. This is a reprint, 1983. Acknowledgements. And then we have chapters. So we have... Uh, we'll just go through pretty much one page. Oh, it's got, oh got, and you've got legislation. So most of this legislation is still enforced. And then, okay, so this is uh, the first one. So these are subscribed notes. They were taken from the individual banks and overprinted. Uh, so these ones have three serial numbers. And then there's another one with two, which is an emergency issue. Okay, got other information. So this is, and also you can see how it has a lot of information. So it has pictures, but also has information about the actual, uh, what's going on. Okay, so that's pretty much just the history. Okay, so we need to go, okay, you got printing and premises. Okay, 27. We will go to. So, got paper and watermarks. So, it gives some information. And has information on the actual coat of arms. Then the next chapter is 45. So, this looks actually quite good. Okay, 45 has serial numbers. Okay, the serial numbers in the pound series, especially the first signature combined. Yeah, got the signatures at times seem erratic and confusing. Study of the letters used, however, reveals the logic behind this selection. So, 
here we go. These countries do this now. So they have different denominations and they have uh, it starting with a different letter. The Australian decimal notes, when I was first introduced in 1966, did this as well. Although it didn't go A, B, C, D, E, F. They had a, a wider variety. Uh, like the $20 started with X. The $1 started with A. $2, I think, started with D. Yeah, I need to look that up. can't remember. So, and a lot of other countries do that. Uh, I can't think of any at the moment, but it's really... So, there we have some more information. Next chapter, 45. Ah, uh, 40. So we have uh, 52. So that's the actual signatures. So, and it gives little information about the person, which is actually quite good. So I'd like to know if this has actually been printed. Okay, then we got 60, which is a... Uh, is that 60? Yeah, gold. Hmm, I haven't read about that. So obviously these are originally backed by gold. Um, but in 1933 or 34, they re just made them legal tender, so you can't exchange them for gold anymore. Uh, yeah, here you go. In August 1914, gold no longer circulated amongst the public, and Australian notes took its place. So that's, I would say gold probably still circulated to an extent, but banknotes are just a lot lighter. Okay, then you got 71 specimen notes. So obviously, I don't know if we produce specimen notes anymore. Some countries do. Some countries use training notes. Uh, so, But I would say Australia does produce specimen notes, but those still held by the Reserve Bank. Okay, chapter 8, 79, uh, Australian notes, distinctive issues. So, you've got the catalogue number and the signatures and the type and what's on the actual uh, banknote, which is very interesting. And... Here we have a 10 shilling banknote, and it gives information about it. And it also gives information about, uh, so it's 20% linen, 80% cotton, and a number printed, which is very valuable. Uh, Renex catalog doesn't give this extensive information. And on and on and on. Okay, here we have the original documents with the number of uh, banknotes printed. And here we have uh, information about each year, the breakdown of new issue and reissue banknotes. Uh, but it doesn't have information about destruction, but being 50 pounds, I would say that's probably not likely. A lot of them probably would have lasted 20, 30 years. Obviously, is this in thousands? Yeah, so... Pretty much a 50 pound stop being issued 1939 and being reissued. Okay, so uh, that's a very interesting catalogue. I need to actually go through it. It'll take me quite a few weeks to actually do that. And well, let's go on. And here we have more information about individual type banknotes. Okay, so this is just all pre decimal. There's no decimal banknotes. Oh, yeah, and here we have information about the destruction. Obviously, they just burnt them in the furnace. Now they just um, shred them up and recycle them. Obviously, being cotton fiber, you could probably actually turn it into a mulch. And count and sold banknotes prior to destruction. So, obviously, this one of the photos looks like these. People might have a, a uniform. Might. Uh, to prevent them from actually pocketing any banknotes. So it wouldn't have had any pockets on it. Ooh, specimen. So, 
So obviously I didn't want to show the entire book, just give you a tidbit. It has how many? 324 pages. Obviously I can't go through every one. I'm pretty sure this is still copyrighted. But if I don't even know if uh, Michael Rowland is still alive or if he has passed away. I'll actually look that up and just see if any more of these have been printed since 1983. Anyway, thank you very much. And I hope this helps you with your banknote collecting, especially if it's pre decimal banknotes. This catalogue is probably, yeah, no, it is, it's pretty valuable. So get one and have it awesome. Oh, it cost me 30 bucks. Thank you. Hooroo.